Hello everyone, and welcome to Fictional Vortex, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto become a godfather. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Finish your breakfast, Naru chan. Kashina Uzumaki smiled at Naruto. Naruto grinned up at his mother, nodding as he took in a big spoonful of oatmeal his father spoon fed him. Naruto hiccuped and Minato's wiped his chin with the paper towel, smiling at Naruto's adorable actions. You're too cute, Naru chan. Minato boasted and Naruto smirked. Looks from Mama. Date Banyo. He raised his hands in the air and that stole Kashina's heart as she picked her little boy up, swinging him around. Minato softly smiled and cleaned up the family's breakfast. Minato had work and Kashina was to have tea with Makoto later that day, so it meant Naruto would play with Sasuke today. Naruto was uber excited. He loved Sasuke. Literally, he loved the raven. He would pet his silky black hair and Sasuke would cuddle with him. Itachi would be at the academy, but he was sure that if they stuck around long enough then Itachi would play with them. After walking as far as the Hokage's office to drop off Minato, and several kisses and hugs goodbye, Kashina and Naruto headed to the Uchiha compound. Naruto skipped the whole way there and when he saw Sasuke, he started to run to the little raven, nearly jumping on him when he got close enough. Sasu. Naruto smiled. Sasuke blushed, kissing Naruto's nose. Nawu asterisk. Makoto stood outside, waving to Kashina. All morning Naruto and Sasuke ran around the house, playing a game they called Kitty Cats. Kitty Cats is when you chase on another around, roll around and nap in the sun and, meow, for anything and everything. Around lunchtime Naruto fed Sasuke some of his mother's ramen. Sasuke liked the ramen, but he wasn't a total freak about it. Sadly, around nap time Kashina decided it was time for Naruto and her to leave. Naruto sniffed, chubby tears coming out of his eyes. Sasuke had shed a few of his tears too. It was so sad to see the totalers hug each other and cry, feeling as if they wouldn't see one another ever again that Makoto invited Kashina to visit tomorrow. Naruto heard this and smiled, kissing Sasuke's nose again. Love you, Sasu. Naruto smiled. Loves Nawu, Sasuke exclaimed, hugging Naruto. When Naruto came home, he had fallen asleep while Kashina carried him to his room for a nap. And he slept peacefully, waking up to hearing his father and mother talking about something he didn't understand in the kitchen. He beamed, rubbing the sleep out of his eyes running to the kitchen where he hugged his father's leg. Daddy! Naruto cheered. Naru chan wants a kiss. Minato smiled, lowering himself to pick up Naruto, receiving a sloppy daddy kiss on his whiskered cheek. Naruto giggled and Kashina smiled. Minato kun, I have to run to the store to pick up dinner. Can you give Naruto a bath? She asked. Minato nodded. All right, come on, Naruto, bath time. Naruto wasn't too lenient on taking a bath, but once he saw his squeaky frogs and bubbles, he knew it would be fun. Naruto shivered once his clothes were taken off, but once Minato swooped him up into the tub, he felt warm again. Naruto immediately attacked for the bubbles, not even noticing that his father had washed his hair already. Minato let Naruto have some fun in the tub, before pulling the plug. Okay, Naruto, let's get you dry and warm so you can eat when Ka-san gets home. Minato smiled, wrapping Naruto's in a fluffy towel. Dada? Naruto asked. How come? I can't see W-O-S-S the street alone? It was completely random, but it made it cute, because you're not that big of a boy to cross the street by yourself yet. Minato smiled. Naruto huffed. He was a big boy, but you and mama call me a big boy all da time. I know little fox. Dot but there are limits, la limits? Naruto asked. Limits. And yes, that means boundaries Naruto, remember the word. Boundires? Minato asked, placing Naruto on the changing table where he changed Naruto into a pull-up and fresh new PJs. Naruto did remember the word, it was the word his mother and father used when he wasn't allowed to do something like touch the stove, open doors, or run down the stairs. Naruto was fully dressed, but he was still sleepy, yawning and rubbing she eyes once more. Daddy. Dot can I take a whittle nap? Naruto asked. Minato smiled. Of course you may lay down again, Naruto. 
The soothing father picked up the sleepyhead once more, except he walked out of the room, heading towards the master bedroom, he'd take a little sleep with his son, since Naruto didn't want nightmares. I want out. Naruto Uzumaki cried. Having to sit in the corner on the knot stool and being quiet was no fun. Especially when it's not his fault. Naruto huffed, tears rolling down his cheeks. Kashina looked out from the corner of the kitchen. No Naruto. Your four minutes aren't up, she said. Not fair. Naruto cried. I didn't do it, Naruto. I watched you hit Sasuke, that wasn't nice, that's why we left early. Kashina said, leaving Naruto to think about what he did. The poor blonde was confused. He and Sasuke were playing kitty cats like they always would and all Naruto did was pet Sasuke's cheek, but for some reason, Sasuke started bawling. Naruto had slapped him, but Naruto didn't think it was bad, he was just playing, he didn't mean it. But Kashina didn't believe him and it resulted in a harsh spanking and five minutes of timeout and he wouldn't be allowed to see Sasuke. For a long while, as Makoto put it. When Naruto's five minutes were up, it was just in time when Minato arrived home. Naruto figured Minato would be his shining light of hope for Minato to help him get out of trouble, but Kashina reached him first, explaining to Minato why Naruto was being punished. Minato frowned. Naruto knew he was in for it now. Naruto. We don't hit our friends, Minato said, hands on his hips scolding Naruto. But I was just pee weighing, Naruto sobbed. Well, Sasuke didn't think it was playing. He said it hurt and it must have if you made him cry. We don't hit our friends Naruto, that makes friends sad. Kashina narrowed her eyes. Why would you think it was okay to hit Sasuke, Naruto? Minato asked. Because. Naruto hiccuped. We played kitties. Dot and kitties do that. Naruto was crying now. He felt embarrassed and upset. He didn't like it when his parents spanked him or punished him. He truly didn't mean to hit Sasuke, he was only playing. Well, we can't play so rough with people Naruto. That's why when Ka-san and I say to calm down when you play with your friends or your toys is so you don't hurt people or break your toys. Minato said. Do you understand, Naruto? Naruto nodded. I. I saw we. He hiccuped. Minato and Kashina sweetly smiled, hugging their baby boy. Naruto made sure to apologize to Sasuke the very next day and he was allowed to play with him again once Sasuke forgave him. After all, they were best friends, they couldn't be separated. Naruto really liked to color. He loved to color with his orange crayon the most. But one day, while coloring in his dad's office since Kashina was assigned a mission and there was no one else to watch Naruto. Minato suggested that Naruto stay in his office and color while he was at a meeting. What could go wrong? Naruto ran out of paper. He had already colored his family, his friends and animals he liked, but now he was sad, he couldn't color anything else because he didn't have any paper left. Naruto tried to look around to find more paper to color on, but he couldn't find any. Taking a look at the walls, he smiled. They were white and he once saw painter's paint on walls so there would be no harm in coloring, right? Wrong. Naruto wasn't even finished with his drawing before his crayon was yanked out of his hand, he was flipped over his father's knee and spanked five times for drawing on the walls and put to bed early that night, without dessert. Naruto never really thought about girls before he met, dot her. For a while, the only woman he ever knew or cared about was his mother. And for a longer time, he considered himself to be married to his mother. He asked his father permission to marry his mommy, since he liked her a lot. Minato only chuckled loudly and said he could have her, which resulted in a frying pan to the back of his head by his darling wife. And so after dinner before bedtime he kissed his mommy on the lips, giving her a plastic ring he found on the ground and was officially married to his mommy. But this time, he wanted to marry. Dot her. H. Hi, Sakura. Naruto nervously blushed at Sakura Haruno. Sakura Naruto was a pretty little girl, pink hair and dashing green eyes. Naruto thought she was a princess if she was that pretty. Married? Sakura asked, thinking about this one. I don't. No, do I have to ask my mommy? She asked. Naruto didn't think about that, he had to ask his daddy. Did Sakura have to ask her mommy? He guessed it would be fine if they forgot to ask this one time. Naruto didn't have a ring for Sakura, but he did have a bunch of flowers he picked. He gave them to Sakura and her eyes glowed, she had never received such a pretty gift. She smiled, 
kissing him on the lips. Naruto giggled but screamed in terror when he saw his mother running after Sakura. How dare you! Violate my baby, she screamed. While Sakura ran away, crying and screaming to get away from the evil lady. Naruto stood there, dumbfounded then realized he had probably hurt his mommy's feelings by marrying Sakura. He figured if he picked her flowers, then she wouldn't be sad anymore. Naruto really liked Kakashi. Kakashi had a funny mask he was always trying to pull down. Kakashi also had puppies for Naruto to play with while he talked to his daddy. One day, Kakashi brought a book with him while he talked to his daddy. Naruto, as much as he liked the doggies, was so curious as to what the book was for. His mommy and daddy told him not to look at it. You're not old enough, his father would blush and smile. If I catch you reading that, I'll cut your fingers off, his mother would say, scaring Naruto. But he was so curious, so dang curious, then his opportunity came. Kakashi's bag had gotten a little rip that would get bigger and bigger till one day, his book fell out of the bag and no one noticed while Kakashi followed Minato to the dining room where the three adults would talk in peace. Naruto smiled, picking up the book, running to his room to read it. Naruto was confused. He couldn't understand the words and there were odd pictures. Pictures of boys taking baths with girls, being in the same bed with them and one boy licked the girl's chest. Naruto couldn't understand. So what was wrong with this book that he couldn't look at? He took baths with his parents and took naps with them and sometimes and his mommy would feed him through her chest. He couldn't understand why it was so, grown up, to read these books. He grew tired of the book and tossed it down the steps. He thought of a new wonder instead of Uncle Kakashi's books. He wanted to know about the balance his daddy kept in the top dresser desk in his parents' room. Naruto, this is Jiraiya. Minato beamed his famous grin. He's a guest in our house so. So don't be a brat. Jiraiya callously spoke, cutting Minato off. Naruto's cheeks had puffed up and his eyes went a slight tint of red. But what? I not a BWAT, Naruto screamed, pointing his thumb to his chest. Mammy says I a cute little baby. Jiraiya smirked. So, you're a baby? I not a baby, Naruto hollered, his face turning a beet red in anger. He liked Jiraiya for a second, that was until he opened his mouth and called him a brat. Naruto hated being called that more than anything in the world. Jiraiya knew he had hit a sweet spot, but he thought twice when he saw an angry look from Minato. Naruto was as curious about Jiraiya as he was Kakashi. He found out that Jiraiya wrote the books Kakashi loves. Naruto innocently spoke up at the dinner table saying he didn't like the books, causing his parents to blush both in anger and surprise and Jiraiya to feel outraged. Jiraiya stayed a whole week and Naruto, as much as he hated it when Jiraiya called him a brat, came to love the teacher. On Jiraiya last day, he requested to Kashina and Minato if he could have some alone time to bond with his godson. They absent-mindedly didn't think anything of this but Naruto could tell something smelled fishy. Okay. Dot now walk through there. Jiraiya grinned. Naruto looked at the sign, he couldn't read very well, but he knew the sign for girls only when he saw one. But, I'm a boy, Naruto stampered, I can't go in there. Jiraiya whistled, acting if nothing was wrong when he kicked the little boy into the room. Naruto went flying and landed in a pile of wet towels. Many girls screamed when they saw Naruto, but a few older women calmed down, smiling. Oh, don't be worried girls, it's on a little boy, one redhead spoke. Are you lost little one? A blonde asked. All these women were naked, largely breached and all doting on the little boy. Jiraiya smiled, hearing the panic in the rooms and put on his worried face. Oh, Naruto, he smiled, pretending to be relieved. There you are, I told you not to go running around. Many girls gave off curious looks, but many of them screamed at the adorable father, who was crying while holding his son. Jiraiya turned his attention to the girls, although he was straight-faced and serious lying to the girls that his son wandered into the girls section of the bathhouse, on the inside he was jumping for joy seeing the many naked women. Naruto was confused. Very confused. And about an hour later, he grew bored of sitting and talking to the naked ladies. And watching his godfather being sumothered in girls, so he asked for a phone to call home. Imagine the beating Kashina and Minato gave Jiraiya that night once they found out what happened to their little boy. 
Sasuke, in Naruto's opinion, was a sweet boy. Sasuke would cuddle with him, even kiss him, and Sasuke called him his best friend. Naruto enjoyed playing with Sasuke. But Sasuke and his friend Sakura had a weird relationship. Sakura, he knew was a clingy person towards Naruto until one day Naruto introduced Sasuke to Sakura and Sakura's eyes lit up like a tiger's. Sasuke clearly did not like Sakura hugging him or petting his hair, and how dare she call him, Sasu. That was something only Naruto could do in his mind. Naruto felt he had done something wrong when he was playing with Sakura and Sasuke. Sasuke would always have a glare on his face and be very pouty, while Sakura cling to the raven. Sasuke couldn't help but see how much attention Sakura would give him and not Naruto, it was as if she was ignoring Naruto to be with him, and she was he had grown so fed up with seeing Naruto cry because his friends wouldn't play with and always ran away from him, when in reality Sasuke ran away from Naruto because wherever Naruto was, Sakura was. Sasuke had been watching Itachi for quite some time now. And one day, he saw something amazing that he begged Itachi to show him. Naruto sniffed, he knew that today he would be able to play with Sakura and Sasuke, but they always ran away from him, leaving him alone and it upset him tremendously. While he waited with Sakura, he couldn't help the tears falling from his eyes, any minute now that his mother, Sakura's mother and Sasuke's mother were having tea, Sasuke would come down from his room and Sakura and Sasuke would run away from him. Sakura. Dot you still my wifey right? Naruto asked. Yeah, sure Naru, she guessed, not paying attention to him. Naruto sighed. Sasuke came into the backyard, smiling. Naruto was surprised, this was the first time in a long time that he saw Sasuke smiling. Sasu, Sakura smiled, running to Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, folding his hands screaming. Fire style, fireball spit. Sakura screamed a bloody screech as four little fireballs came chasing after her. She wouldn't be playing with Sasuke or Naruto for a very long time. Naruto wasn't allowed candy that much, his father insisted that since he was already a wild child, he didn't need much sweets. Once in a great while Naruto was allowed something sweet to eat, but mostly for a treat. He certainly wasn't allowed to eat candy before dinner. One day, Naruto had a huge craving for some chocolate his mother bought. Naruto licked his lips seeing the candy sticking out of the shopping bag, just teasing him, daring him to have one tiny lick of the chocolate. Well, one lick turned out to be one tiny bit. One tiny bite turned to one bigger bite, and then an even bigger bite. Now, there was no more chocolate and a messy boy with chocolate stains on the front of his shirt, in his hair and on his hands, whiskered cheeks and a little on his pants. Naruto rubbed his tummy in delight. Um, yummy. Naruto boasted, sucking the chocolate from his fingers. Naruto Minato Uzumaki. A scream came from behind him. Naruto yelped, turning around seeing his mother, her red hair flowing upward just like tails of a fox. He screamed, running away from her. Get back here, you're tracking chocolate through the house. Kashina screamed running after Naruto. Minato turned behind a corner trying not to smile from the scene. It had been going on for 15 minutes. At first Kashina thought nothing of it and figured it would pass, but later on that afternoon as the day continued its course of going with the flow, it wouldn't stop and it pestered her. It was cute and adorable at first, now it was downright irritating and it made her temper rise. Naruto continued to eat his finger sandwiches, Minato read the paper, sipping coffee and she growled, watching the clock tick-tock. Hick. Kashina's eyebrow twitched. Hick. Minato flipped the page of his newspaper, eyeing Naruto. Hick. Kashina's face is beat red. Hick hick. God damn it. I can't take it anymore. Minato Naruto has the hiccups. Kashina screamed in annoyance. Minato sighed, placing his paper down, turning to Naruto. It was lunchtime and Naruto was seated in his booster seat at the table eating sliced sandwiches. Naruto, I'm getting you a glass of water to calm the hiccups, all right. Minato smiled, reaching for Naruto's favorite orange cup, the one with the ninja stars painted on. Hick, want juice? Naruto demanded. Hick, no, you're having water, or the hiccups won't leave. Minato replied, already pouring water into the cup. Naruto hiccuped three more times before guzzling down the beverage after he sighed in content from the cool drink, the adults waited three minutes in silence then. Hick, datbane. 
Kashina screamed. Uck. Kashina pulled Naruto out of his booster seat, flipping him upside down and shaking him. Minato was shocked. Kashina. He screamed, trying to stop Kashina from giving Naruto brain damage. Naruto giggled. Faster mommy, faster. Kashina huffed and puffed, setting Naruto gently on the ground on his feet. Naruto beamed, giggling. One. More. He smiled. One. Okay. I think they're gone. Kashina smiled. Two. Kashina. That was totally you Ness. Three. Hick. Damn it. Okay. Naruto. You're a big boy now. That means you have to start going to the bathroom on your own. Minato said, following Naruto to the bathroom. But, I don't know. Naruto said, looking unsure. Naruto was still in the potty training stage, he had a weak bladder and had accidents, but since he had turned three, that was becoming less frequent. He still had bed wetting problems at night, but Minato was focused on daytime training first. Come on Naruto, it's not that hard. Minato said, using his kanai to open the box that had toddler steps to help little ones to the toilet better. Naruto looked unsure. He was laid on the ground as his daddy took off his dry pull-up and set him on the toilet. Okay, now Naruto, now if you have to go, just G on the toilet. Minato instructed. Naruto looked up. Minato blinked. Naruto blinked. Oh, I bet you want to be alone. Minato guessed, already leaving the bathroom, Naruto watching his every move. Minato closed the door, standing outside. Now, Call me when you're done and I'll show you what to do next. Minato said, having his hands behind his back. Naruto sat for a few seconds, he didn't have to go at all, so he hoisted himself off of the toilet, forgetting he was bare-skinned from the waist down. Then he smiled. He was in the bathroom. Alone. He had never been in this room alone. Usually his mother and father would always accompany him here, now that he was alone, he could explore. Naruto hummed opening the cabinets. He found a few rolls of toilet paper, he didn't find them fun until he flung one, watching the paper spin and roll out into a long strip. He giggled, throwing more rolls around. Minato who was outside the door, raised an eyebrow. Naruto, are you okay? No daddy, don't open, I'm going potty. Naruto lied, throwing more paper. Minato nodded, okay, tell me when you're done. He didn't sound quite sure but he'd do anything to get Naruto out of diapers. Naruto tried to contain his giggles as he continued to trash the place with toilet paper, then something else caught his eye. It was a bomb, it was the kind like the ones in cartoons. He gasped in awe as he pushed the little plunger, but instead of a loud bang, it was a cotton material with a string, he sighed sadly knowing he was wrong about the bomb and tossed it away. Then his ninja rubber duckies caught his eyes. Minato tapped his foot, the bathroom was quiet. Too quiet. He opened the door and his jaw dropped. N Naruto. What have you done? Naruto looked up from his rubber duckies. I'm pee weighing. He spoke. Minato lightly cursed under his breath and went pale when Kashina came home, in a dire need to use the restroom. Kashina's red hair would drag on the floor wherever she walked. Naruto liked to follow it around. When he was younger, he loved to curl up in the red mass of hair when he took naps with his mommy. Kashina didn't mind at all. Her hair was so long that if Naruto wanted to roll around and play with it, it wouldn't pull on her head. But that was when he was a baby. Now he was a three-year-old toddler. He liked to pull and tug really hard on her hair and it that did hurt. Mama, I wanna snuggle. Naruto giggled, raising his arms and Kashina obliged him picking him up where Naruto snuggled his little head into her neck, taking a sniff of Kashina's hair. Strawberries. He sighed in content. His mother's hire was still a comfort for him. When Minato came home later that night, Naruto was attempting to braid Kashina's hair while the doting mother make a salad. Minato chuckled, walking over to his wife kissing her forehead. Naruto looked up and gasped in horror. As Kashina hugged his daddy tightly in a loving manner, his daddy had the nerve to sniff his mommy's hair. That does it, my hair, Naruto screamed, pulling on Kashina's red hair. Kashina yelped and turned swiftly around. Datbane, she screamed. Naruto, Minato hollered, mama's hair, mine. He took a big grip on the hair and Kashina rolled her eyes. Naruto, my hair can be for daddy too. It's mostly mine anyways. Naruto huffed, 
His mommy was his wifey. Why does he have to share? Minato sadly smiled, grabbing something behind his back. While Kashina and Naruto had a heated disagreement, Kashina heard a small snip, snip. She gasped and Naruto cheered. Here, Naruto. Minato smiled, placing three locks of red hair into a plastic bag, handing it to his son. Mama's hair. He smiled, opening the bag, he could still smell his mother's scent. Now, Naruto could smell, grab and pull and loving do whatever he wanted to the hair without hurting Kashina's head and his relationship with his father. Naruto skipped to his room, chanting, I have mama's hair. Minato smiled, turning to his wife in which he paled. You. Dot cut, my hair. She growled, quote dot dot dot, just a tiny inch, Minato replied. Chapter 5. Kayubi Minato Kashina. Kayubi was a big red fox. He was the nine-tailed demon that was sealed inside Naruto Minato Uzumaki. He was ferocious. He was dashing. He was sick and tired of smelling ramen. Naruto giggled while playing jump rope with Kayubi's tail and Kayubi groaned, seeing the little slip of paper. He was sealed away in this huge cage by a lousy slip of paper. He looked down at Naruto. The kid didn't look too bright in his opinion. He'd probably kill everyone if you bribed him well enough. Wait. That's it. Bribing. Kit. He spoke. Why you call me dat? Naruto smiled, not looking up. That's the name of a baby fox, now Kit. He called once more. Naruto stopped what he was doing and looked at Kayubi. Kayubi smirked, an idea popping into his head. Do you like that game? He smiled, evilly. Naruto nodded. You fur, makes me think of mammy. Naruto smiled. Kayubi gasped, he knew this would work, he smirked once more. Hum, interesting. You know, I have more than just that amount of fur. This idea was going to be his ticket out of here. Wheelie, Naruto asked, Suor, I have a whole body full of that fur, it's the finest fur of all foxes, Kayubi boasted, his ego getting the best of him. He cleared his throat, would you like to? touch it. He grinned his foxy grin. Yeah, yeah, I wanna, I wanna. Naruto jumped up and down. Okay Naruto chan oh, oh, darn. Kayubi pretended to sound defeated. What Wong? Naruto asked, worried. You see, Kit, I can't let you touch my fur, because I'm sealed away in this cage, do you see that little paper up there? Kayubi's heart raced as he knew any second he would leave this horrible care. Yeah, Naruto spoke, I need you to grab it. Kayubi spoke really fast, super excited. Naruto didn't look so sure of himself. You promise, we play more. He asked, yeah, yeah, sure just do it. Kayubi lied. Naruto hopped on one of Kayubi's tails as Kayubi rose Naruto hider in the air, his little arm stretched out and his fingers wiggling to rip off the seal Kayubi's heart races massively and whiskey as he couldn't help but smile. Yes. Dot yes, so close Naruto. Rip it off. Kayubi cheered. Naruto's tongue stuck out of his mouth in concentration. Naruto. Naruto and Kayubi gasped. Mammy. Naruto cheered. It's lunch time. No. No kit. Come back. Kayubi called after Naruto as Naruto slid off of Kayubi's tail running away from the cage. You were helping me take off the seal. Next time. Kayubi. Naruto called back. Of course. Naruto didn't. Do it next time. Much to Kayubi's rage, Naruto figured playing with Kayubi's tail was enough. Minato Namikaze was his name. Minato Namikaze was his daddy. Naruto knew he had the coolest daddy ever. His daddy was the Hokage, pretty much the best guy in town. Everyone knew his father, everyone in the stores, everyone on the streets and of course everyone of his friends knew who his daddy was. His daddy was popular. His daddy beat up bad guys, his daddy knew cool things to do with a little blue ball he called the Risengan, his daddy could also be serious and slightly scary if he was mad. Although that only happened when Naruto was in trouble, like coloring on his walls of his office, or using his important papers to make airplanes and playing dress up in his Hokage robe, well, Minato didn't mind the last one as long as Naruto hung it back up. Even though his daddy worked a lot and could be stern. His daddy always tried to made time for Naruto and his mommy. Minato would swoop Naruto with his large and strong arms, carrying him to wherever Naruto desired. His father, just like his mother, would soothe him to sleep. 
Naruto would get lost in the sweet lullabies Minato would sing and cuddling with his daddy was just as good as cuddling with his mommy. Minato scared away the monsters in his closet and under his bed, therefore, Naruto did not fear monsters. Dot too much. Minato was a funny daddy. He once tried to make Kashina and Naruto a ramen lunch, when he burnt the noodles. Kashina laughed loudly, how do you burn noodles, you dope? Naruto gasped, daddy, did the noodles go to heaven? Minato was his hero. Naruto would always see a look of, what adults call, pride in his eyes. Naruto had no idea how much he meant to Minato. Naruto, according to himself, is and always will be his little baby boy. Naruto, his miracle, his beautiful gift from the one he loved with all his heart. A hero. Both of them, saw each other, as a hero. One was born to be a hero. The other, loved as a hero. Both good, both loved. Daddy, Naruto asked one night, just as Minato was turning on the nightlight. Yes, Naruto, Minato smiled. Naruto thought of what he wanted to say, but he couldn't figure out what. He didn't know what to call this feeling until he was told later in life of what it was called, but at the moment, three-year-old Naruto was feeling, longing. It had been a whole two days since he saw his daddy and he missed him. He just didn't know how to say it. Quote dot dot dot, nothing, he replies, turning over to fall asleep. Minato smiles sdly, walking over to sit in the nursery rocking chair. He'll watch his son sleep, just this once. Four words of warning. Don't. Mess. With. Kashina. If you manage to follow those simple life lines, then you'll be great with Kashina. Kashina was once a lonely child, who didn't want to be told what to do. She hated men for a long time until she met Minato who had saved her life and truthfully told her of how he didn't want to lose her. Kashina thought that when she was pregnant, she'd be having a girl, but fate proved her wrong and she blessed a baby boy into this world. A messy, loud, adorable, and if you told her otherwise, her fist met your face in a heartbeat, little boy. Kashina knew Naruto was perfect, she wasn't speaking that like every mother does of their child, she spoke that as a matter of fact. Kashina gave Naruto everything as a little baby, well, everything little babies were allowed and slightly more. If Naruto cried, she'd be at his side in a blink of an eye. If Naruto couldn't sleep, then damn it she wasn't sleeping until he was. Naruto and Kashina couldn't be separated for a long time. The only ones Kashina felt comfortable holding Naruto were her husband, Tsunade and if he proved himself worth of holding her little miracle, Jiraiya. Other who asked, pretty please. With large eyes, she'd have to think about. One day, Naruto did it. He walked. When Naruto smiles, Kashina's world is filled with sunshine. When Naruto cries, she feels horrible. And as much as she wants to, she knows she can't keep him from growing up. One day, he'll meet a pretty girl, become Hokage, marry that pretty girl and she'll have to number two hash for girls he loves. And if he has daughters then her rank will be lowered. She sighs, maybe she's overreacting, but she has the right, doesn't she? I wanna, marry you, mama, Naruto declared one morning. Kashina was washing dishes when Naruto declared he was marrying his mother. Kashina's heart fluttered with joy. Oh, Naruto, that's so sweet. She smiled. I gotta, wing and everything. Eh, wing, wing. Naruto held up a plastic ring with a pink heart in the middle, it was dusty, but she still loved it. I ask Ed Daddy and he says it okay. Naruto beamed, kiss you. Kashina smiled, lowering down her neck and head and Naruto kissed her lips placing the ring on her finger right in front of the ring Minato gave her on their wedding day. Loves mommy more than ramen. Naruto chimed. Kashina grinned. Mommy loves you too, Naruto. What Kashina doesn't know, if Naruto's philosophy was, your mother is your first love. And it's true. Quote dot dot dot, mommy make me ramen, Naruto asked, a sneaky grin on his face. Kashina's eyes popped open. Did you just want ramen? Naruto liked Itachi. Itachi was so cool. Itachi was Sasuke's older brother and if he was lucky, Itachi would be home when Naruto came to play and sometimes if he was really lucky, Itachi would play with Sasuke and him if they asked. Itachi was a quiet person. He didn't like too loud of noises. He was very gentle and it made Naruto want an older brother who was just like Itachi. 
Sasuke was lucky to have Itachi. One day, luck came his way. His parents told him that they were going out to eat. Although Naruto at first was upset knowing he wouldn't be allowed to go, but once his parents told him Itachi would be watching him, he didn't mind if he wasn't allowed to go out to dinner. Naruto bounced around the house while his mother and father instructed Itachi on Naruto's behavior, what to expect and what to do when something happens. They told Itachi Naruto would need a bath and that he was teething at a late start in life and there was tooth gel in the bathroom. Itachi had never in his life seen such a hyper child. Sure, he had already known Naruto for a while, but Naruto acted like a guest in his home. This was Naruto's home, meaning Naruto could run around and be a totally different person. Itachi had spoon-fed Naruto steamed leeks and carrots, given him a bubble bath and made sure Naruto brushed his teeth, applying the gel before Naruto could complain about his mouth hurting. Naruto had fallen asleep in Itachi's lap while Itachi told Naruto a bedtime story and Itachi smiled. Naruto is a good kid, Itachi smiled. The next morning Naruto ran as fast as he could to the Uchiha compound with his mother. Sasuke could see Naruto running and he smiled opening his arms for Naruto to hug him, imagine his anger when he saw Naruto run right past him and just into Itachi's arms. Now he had another thing to beat Itachi at. Soap was used sometimes to be placed into Naruto's mouth when he used, swear words, and his parents caught him, but mostly soap was used for bath time. Naruto loved his little bar of soap, it was orange and smelled like peaches. Naruto loved getting all soapy and clean, smelling fresh and feeling great. Soap was not to be eaten. Naruto learned that the hard way when he ate half a bar of soap and got sick. Although, Minato and Kashina did find the bubbles Naruto would burp out of his mouth, just absolutely cute. Mama, Naruto cried in fear, throwing toys and pulling covers off of his bed, he was incredibly worried. His nap time was soon it was bad enough he had to take one, but he couldn't find his blankie. Mama, Naruto cried, louder causing Kashina to stop whatever she was doing and come up the stairs. Naruto. Dot why are you screaming? She asked. You're supposed to be sleeping. But I can't find B. Wanky. Naruto cried. Blanky was a soft yellow colored blanket Naruto has had ever since he came home for the first time as a newborn baby. Naruto loved that blanket. It was soft to snuggle with. It was a comfort he couldn't live without. Naruto had searched everywhere and like the three-year-old he was, he immediately avenue up, landing on the ground and sobbed loudly. Kashina frowned, trying not to cry herself, she didn't like it when he little boy was crying. She picked him up, rocking him and sushing him, attempting to try and make him fall asleep. Minato hummed a tune, holding the basket of clothes. He just came from the cleaners, his Hokage robes, yes, he does have more than one robe, had snot and drool stains from Naruto falling asleep in them. When he came in the house he was baffled why he heard crying. Taking the basket he, flashed, upstairs to Naruto's room. Minato aoi, Kashina said, why are you home? Minato smiled, my cloaks were dirty so I ran them to the cleaners why is Naruto crying? He can't find his blankie, Kashina said, he's searched everywhere. Minato frowned, walking over to Naruto where he placed his hands on Naruto's quivering back. Oh, Naru-chan. Please don't cry, Minato soothed, Naruto turned to look at his father when he noticed the basket. Then he gasped, climbing out of his mother's hold to run to the basket. Minato and Kashina exchanged confused looks while Naruto dug through the basket. Biwanki, he cried with joy, pulling the soft and fresh smelling blanket out of the robes. Now he remembered, last night he was wearing his father's cloak to use as dress up while he commanded his, village, stuffed animals and his pet frogs and he fell asleep. Minato must have accidentally washed it along with his cloaks. Naruto yawned, starting to drift off and both parents smiled, picking up Naruto tucking him into his bed for his nap. And Naruto drifted into dream world with his thumb in his mouth and his blankie. Naruto thought toads looked funny the first time he ever saw one. They had funny legs and a big mouth. Naruto loved them most of all because they hopped high in the sky. Naruto giggled constantly one afternoon while Gamabunta and his two sons were summoned. Minato had some serious questions he wanted to ask the boss toad while Gamakichi and Gamatatsu played lap frog with Naruto. Gamatatsu and Gamakichi soon became Naruto's close friends. 
The three played leapfrog whenever they could, leaving Gamabunta and Minato smiling for the rest of the day while watching their sons play in the sun. Achu, when Naruto had a cold, all hell would break loose in the Namikaze Uzumaki family. Minato would be running errands all over Konoha looking for the best medications in the village for his son, Kashina on the other hand would be the doting girl she was and fuss over her baby. Achu, Naruto would get sick in a great while, he was usually healthy and happy, but when he was sick, all hell was loose and out of order. Achu, little Naruto cried, his head hurt and he was sneezing. Cold, yet hot, hungry, yet didn't want to even think about food. Minato and Kashina would lay on either side of Naruto, gently rubbing his back, kissing away his tears and just making him feel better. Naruto fell asleep, like the little chibi angel he was, right on his mother's lap. Naruto would feel so much better the next day becoming, once again the happy, hyper, loud boy he was. Come on, Naru-chan. Minato spoke, a spoonful of mixed vegetables in his hand. Naruto shook his head, turning away from the icky veggies. You need to eat your vegetables if you wanna, be strong like daddy. Minato encouraged. No, Naruto pouted. Naruto was not a picky eater, he'd eat the box the food came in if he had his wish granted, but when it came to vegetables, Naruto wouldn't even smell them. Right now, Naruto had to eat carrots, corn, spinach, green beans and beets. Naruto wouldn't even look at them. See, look at daddy, Minato ate the spoon full. Um, see, daddy likes them. Naruto shook his head, he hated vegetables, they were all different colors and all smelled rotten. Minato sighed, he wanted Naruto to eat only the best, so he made sure Kashina and himself bought only organic vegetables, apparently Naruto didn't like that idea and now he was refusing to eat what was on his plate. Which was mixed vegetables. Naruto, you can't eat ramen for the rest of your life. Minato said, ramen is only for a spicale occasion. Mama makes it for me. Naruto pouted, well, Mama isn't here. Mama went on a mission and won't be back until late tonight, so you have to eat your vegetables. Minato spoke, slightly fed up with Naruto's antics. No, Naruto boomed. Minato sighed, Naruto, if you don't eat your vegetables, I can guarantee you won't see another ramen bowl in your life. Naruto's eyes widened and he looked at his father in disbelief. He couldn't do that, could he? He was going to question it. If his father could make him go to bed early and be put in long-term timeouts then maybe his father could take AAY ramen. Naruto gulped, yanking the spoon out of his father's hand and wolfing down the vegetables. Naruto, not so fast, you'll choke, Minato nearly screamed. As if on K, Naruto started to choke. He knew vegetables were bad. Naruto disliked the rain, it kept him inside and away from playing with Sasuke. It had rained all of last night and it wouldn't stop until later this afternoon and by then it would be too late to play with Sasuke. Naruto sighed, sitting in his playroom with all sorts of toys surrounding him. It wasn't even lunch time and he was already bored with nothing to do. His mother had house cleaning to do and Naruto wasn't allowed to be around the chemicals. His father was doing Hokage stuff which Naruto thought of the job as bossing people around which of course, was no the case and it was gloomy and dark and wet outside. Wayne, go away, Naruto still had to work on his, ours, Minato was working on that with Naruto. Naruto sighed, walking to the large window with both his stuffed Minato doll, Kashina doll and Naruto doll, they were hand sewn from his Bachan, Tsunade, and given to him by Jiraiya Gigi. He sighed, sadly, I hate you, Wayne, he screamed at the sky. This did nothing and Naruto groaned loudly, landing on the floor face first with the thud. He was so bored. A few hours later when Naruto awoke from his nap, he smiled seeing the bright sunshine. Running to the back door, he screamed with delight as he hopped on the wet, gooey ground. Mud puddles were everywhere and Naruto loved to hop, skip and spash in the mud. It was so much fun and it felt nice on his skin. We. Oui. Naruto cheered as he slid on his bum across the yard landing in a huge mud pile. He, he, he. Naruto giggled as he walked in the house, clearly not thinking that Kashina just mopped the floors and he was tracking icky mud in the house. Kashina gasped seeing Naruto covered head to toe in the mud and tracking it in the house. Naruto Minato Uzumaki, what are you doing? She screeched. 
Naruto looked up. Uh oh. He took off, with Kashina chasing him. And it was chocolate inside and all over again. If it wasn't Kakashi, or Itachi babysitting Naruto, it was Kakashi's good friend, Uruka. Uruka was nice in Naruto's mind. And he was that word adults used, wise. Naruto knew Uruka was very wise indeed. Uruka, in Naruto's mind could also see into the future. So, dot you can see into the future? Naruto innocently asked. No, Naruto, I cannot see into the future. Uruka said, I know you can't eat jelly straight out of the jar, because that'll make your Ka-san and Tu-san mad. Naruto was caught red-handed when he tried to sneak into the fridge to eat the blackberry jelly straight out of the jar with his tiny bare hand and now Uruka was lecturing the blonde. But you just said that they'll be mad, how can you know that if it hasn't happened yet? Naruto asked. Uruka sighed, no, Naruto, it's common sense that your parents will be mad if you eat all the jelly for a snack. Your belly will hurt and you won't be able to eat dinner. Wow, you can see into the future and you see a lot. Naruto said, very impressed. Uruka groaned, no, Naruto, I'm not seeing into the future, like I said before, it's common sense that your Ka-san and Tu-san mad if you eat straight out of the jar before eating dinner. Naruto thought for a moment, well, I'm not common, Ka-san says I'm one of a kind, so that rule must not apply to me. Naruto smiled, sticking his small hand into the jar and sucking on his hand as he ate the jelly. Uruka facepalmed himself and groaned. Naruto was more of a kitty, toad and fox person but he could make room for dogs. His friend, Kiba, loved dogs more than anything. He had a little pup named Akamaru. Akamaru was just a baby and for as hyper as little puppies could be, they often slept a lot too. One day, Kiba's sister went looking for Kiba and Naruto. Naruto's mother had come to pick him up from the playdate. I magna her and Kashina squealing from utter adorableness as Kiba and Naruto laid next to each other with Akamaru in the sun, napping. I tinnik Hinata as a tomato, Mami. Naruto said. Kashina looked puzzled. Her, Naruto and Minato were at the Hayugas because Minato wanted to visit his best friend, for old times sake and he brought along Naruto to meet Hinata. The first time Naruto even said hello to Hinata, he said it boldly and confidently to her. The poor girl fainted and Naruto thought he did something wrong. I think she would like Sasu. Sasu likes tomatoes, Naruto smiled. Kashina felt a sweat tear, knowing the relationship between the Uchihas and Hayugas wasn't a really good one. But nevertheless, Hinata awoke, firmly apologizing to Naruto even though he said she didn't have to do that and the two of them had played house. Naruto considered himself a very good man at the end of the day, he had managed to marry Hinata by giving her a bouquet of dandelion flowers. Not only was he married to his mother and Sakura, but Hinata too. He liked Hinata, she was kind and sweet. So sweet in fact, that he wanted to kiss her. Err, I'm so sorry, I promise this won't happen again. Minato smiled sadly, rubbing the back of his head. Hinata's father sighed, his house was destroyed, because Kashina Uzumaki found Hinata kissing. Dot her baby. Actually it is the other way around. No. No. It's, alright. She just destroyed the inside, nothing's wrong with the walls or doors. He replied, kindly. Minato smiled and poor Hinata, all she got was a tiny kiss on the nose before her Naruto was snatched away from her. Sasuke was mad, Naruto couldn't figure out why though. Today was his play day with Sasuke and all Sasuke did was scowl at Naruto. He wouldn't play with him more or less look at him. Naruto cried, tears rolling down his cheeks. S Sasu, why won't you play with me? He asked, sadly. Sasuke was furious, but most of all jealous. He turned around, swiftly to Naruto, slightly startling Naruto. Why do you kiss Hinata, but not me? He nearly screamed. Naruto was his best friend after all, why does Naruto give all his kisses away to Kashina, and of all the nerve, Sakura and now Hinata? He had known Naruto since he could remember and Naruto has not once given him a kiss. Naruto smiled. Oh, is that all you wanted? Sasuke blushed, his cheeks puffing. Naruto leaned in, closing his eyes. Sasuke bit his lip, kissing Naruto's lips. Makoto and Kashina were talking when Kashina just happened to look out the window and she screamed, not another one. Darting for the backyard to snatch away her innocent. 
precious angel Chan. First Sakura, then Hanada, now this Uchiha boy. No way were these brats taking away her child. If Naruto knew when to run, it was now. His daddy just caught him writing on the walls with a sharpie and Minato did not look happy. At first Minato didn't mean to yell at Naruto, it just sort of happened but he was having a bad day, with meetings after meetings with stupid councilmen who wouldn't listen to him and now to come home to your son drawing on the walls was the last straw. Naruto, get over here, now, Minato screamed, running after Naruto. Minato was never the one to have a temper, usually that was Kashina but at the moment he was so angry, tired and frustrated that Naruto just happened to be in the middle of things. Naruto thought he lost his father for a moment, but in a yellow flash Minato was at Naruto's side, pulling Naruto by the ear to Naruto's naughty corner in the living room. Why were your drawing on the walls? Minato boomed. Naruto's bottom lip quivered, slightly out of fear. Answer me, Minato screamed. Naruto couldn't answer, instead he let out a wail of tears. He knew what he did was wrong, but his daddy screaming at him frightened him and he didn't realize he was shaking, but Minato did and in a split second his head cleared and guilt washed over his heart. Oh, Naruto. He spoke softly, getting on one knee, cupping his son's teary face. Oh, Naru-chan, I'm so sorry, Minato nearly cried, he knew today was going to be a bad day when he woke up late but he didn't think it would be this bad. Now his son was crying, for something he did. Naruto sniffed, hugging his daddy back. I, swore, daddy, I swore, he sobbed, then hiccuped. Minato gently smiled, let's clean up the mess you made, Naruto. No dessert tonight for you though. Naruto nodded, he had to admit, that was better than being screamed at. Yes, daddy. Minato smiled, wiping a few tears away ticking Naruto's shin and cheeks, glad to see a giggling little boy once more. It was one of the most horrific questions they thought they would never have to answer. They had rehearsed on what to say when Naruto asked, where do babies come from? They even had an answer for, where did meet daddy, mommy? Even the frequently asked question, when will I go to school? Question was rehearsed and ready to be answered. But where the hell did this come from? Mommy, daddy, what's yaoi this stunned both parents well uh yaoi is a uh, minato shrugged where was kakashi so he could beat the shit out of him for letting naruto peek into his bloody orange book well sweeties yaoi is well uh where's jiraiya so she can beat him to a bloody pulp for teaching her innocent little boy the horrors of bedroom activities aika aika yaoi paradise a boy's fantasy naruto replied kashina and minato paled it was like that for five minutes before Kashina felt a little light bulb blink above her head. Who wants cookies? She smiled. I do, I do. Naruto smiled. Running into the kitchen Minato followed him wanting a cookie too, but Kashina grabbed him by the collar. Ah, I want a cookie. Minato mumbled. Minato, where are those perverts? Kashina growled. At the ramen shop, Kakashi and Jiraiya shuddered both looking at one another before running out of town, leaving Ayame puzzled. Kakashi and Jiraiya knew they had to leave, something told them to leave town and don't come back for a few months. Naruto was told of a wonderful place. That place had endless ramen buffets, countless frogs and the air was sweet. That place, his mommy and daddy said, was called heaven. Naruto never thought about heaven much until one day when Minato was told that his father died. Minato never knew his father. Meeting his father on the deathbed wasn't something you'd consider a reunion. Naruto didn't like it when his mommy or daddy cried, it even amazed him how his father cried but it happened. Naruto really had to use the bathroom where he saw his daddy on the ground next to the toilet throwing up and crying. Naruto wanted to call for his mommy, but something told him to stay. Gently he approached his sobbing father, placing his tiny hand on his shoulder. Daddy, why you see wying? Naruto asked. Minato didn't answer. Why you see wying when Oji San is waiting in heaven? Minato stopped crying. Gently he turned his head, not blinking, and stared at his son. Oji waiting for us, daddy. In heaven, Naruto innocently said. Minato smiled, tears rolling from his face as he gently hugged his son. Nightmares would happen with any child. Parents would endure interrupted, 
disturbed, maybe even restless nights with a child who had frequent nightmares. Naruto was no exception, he had his fair share of nightmares and each one left him crying for his mommy. Kashina had heard him cry loudly one night, she had picked him up out of bed, holding him gently as she carried him downstairs to cuddle and soothe. Sweep with you and daddy, please. Naruto would cry, Kashina was never the one to say, no, to her little boy. The nightmares would happen and eventually they stopped happening so often. Still, when Kashina thinks of Naruto growing to become a man, she wishes he would be the little boy who's want to be held and cuddles with by his mommy. Are you an Angwell? Naruto asked a stranger one day. E.H. She spoke. X. Excuse me, an Angwell. Naruto repeated. Um, no, I'm not I'm afraid. She nervously laughed. But, the Rawaman you make is goody. Naruto insisted. You gotta, be an Angwell. Naruto was swooped off the ground by Uruka, who was fumming mad. Naruto, how many times have I told you to quit running away? Uruka snapped. But I had a, see the Angwell. Naruto pointed to the teen behind the counter. Uruka looked up, confused. Oh, Ayame, he asked. Ayame's an Angwell, Naruto boasted. Her rawaman is goody. Uruka sighed. Did you just want ramen? Naruto nodded. Once again his charm had earned him ramen, thanks to the angel Ayame. Daddy, Naruto spoke one day. He was with his daddy sitting on the floor coloring when he remembered something. Yes, Naruto. Minato smiled, happy to have a free day with his son at last. Naruto bit his lip, he wasn't sure how to tell his daddy this. When he was at the park with his mommy playing with Sasuke, some lady called him something that baffled him. Daddy, am I a filthy demon? Naruto asked. Minato's eyes widened and he was quiet. Quote dot dot dot, what? He asked. A demon, Naruto repeated. A filthy demon child. Minato felt something clench in his heart and he found all he could hear was his heartbeat and his world began spinning pretty soon he found himself hugging the daylights out of Naruto, trying to refrain from crying. You're not a demon child Naruto, you're a good boy. Damn those villagers. Naruto, who called you that? Minato asked, curious. I don't know, daddy. All I could hear were whispers. Naruto spoke, guilty. Minato put on a fake smile and it fooled Naruto. Well. Forget about that, Naruto. Let's go see if Ka-chan has any goodies. Minato smiled. I wanna. Goody. Naruto chimed, running out of his room to the kitchen. Minato was left standing alone in the room, his teeth gritting and his knuckles were white keeping him from breaking something out of anger. Minato took a deep breath to calm himself. If he ever caught someone calling his son, demon child, there's no telling what he'd do. Naruto was his angel his only child. And he'll protect him no matter what the cost. Naruto, just like all tutelers, had his share of tantrums. Just because he was sweet as sugar, he could be one sour puss at times. One fine example would be when Naruto ran off from his mother at the department store, he was found ten minutes later, while his hysterical mother screamed at him he had screamed back, not seeing a problem with walking away when he knew how to find her. Of course this led to Kashina taking away his TV time, dessert, and one of his Fabriota toys. Naruto would pout, fuss and cry demanding his privileges be given back to him, but the more he whined and screamed about it, the more time he spent on his not chair in the corner. Of course he was sent to bed early that night, much to his disappointment. But when Naruto had seemed to calm down, Kashina and Minato both explained as to why Naruto should never run off. They wouldn't want him taken or for him to get lost and scared. Naruto thinks about it, and cries. He sobs while he apologizes, realizing that someone could have taken him away from his mommy and daddy. He didn't want that. Kashina kisses his cheeks and Minato rubs his back, both soothing him into a slumber. Sometimes Naruto had tantrums, but each one ended in a kiss goodnight. Naruto found it so wonderful that he could draw on the street. He giggled making Kakashi although he made sure Kakashi had puppy ears and his orange book. He made him and Sasuke holding hands and he drew his new friends Shikamaru and Ino. When he tried to draw Sakura, he always ended up making her look extra special. He still liked her, after all. He drew his mommy and his daddy, he drew his Ba-chan, Tsunade and Jiraiya Gigi. Making sure he also drew Uruka, 
Itachi, Gamabunta and his sons as well as Kayubi. Naruto would come back to the ally to see his drawings gone, but he didn't fret. New drawings were ready to come to life. Daddy, Naruto smiled, his eyes extra big for today. Minato smiled casually looking down from his paperwork to his son, admiring on how adorable Naruto looked this morning, still in his pull-up and socks. Yes, Naruto, can I pee way dress up? Naruto asked. Dress up was usually a girl's game to play, but Minato loved his son and could care less if Naruto wanted to wear a pink tutu, as long as Naruto was happy, he was happy. Minato nodded, giving him the silent, yes. Um, daddy, Naruto said. Minato looked back down. What's wrong, Naruto? He asked. Naruto pointed to the coat rack where Minato's Hokage cloak was hanging and Minato thought for a moment. He did have other coats, but he still felt lenient about Naruto playing in them. Still he shrugged, making sure Naruto knew not to eat, drink, or jump in any mud in his coat. Naruto nodded, giggling as Minato set the coke over Naruto and Naruto looked quite silly in the coat, actually. It went past his little arms, covering his small hands and it dragged on the ground where he stood. I'm Hokage, Naruto cheered, running out of the room to play. Minato chuckled to himself, thinking Naruto wanted to dress up as the Hokage, when in reality, Naruto wanted to dress like his daddy. Not the Hokage, his daddy. Kerr boom, little Naruto screamed, hiding under the covers of his bed. He sobbed loudly, he hated storms, they woke him up in the middle of the night with loud thunder and bright lightning, and he didn't have the courage to run to his mommy and daddy to sleep in their bed. Boom boom, naturally. He did what any child would do. Cry loudly, then deny it in the morning. Mama, he bawled loudly that he was sure thunder couldn't block it out this time. Kashina groaned and Minato yawned. Want me to get him? The blonde yawned more. No, I got it. Kashina mumbled, strolling to her son's room. It would be another night of Naruto sleeping in the middle of their bed while the two parents tried not to fall off either sides, meaning, not much sleep for them. Kashina really hated thunderstorms. Naruto looked around, making sure no one was coming, then he chuckled. Who knew such a sweet boy with angel wings and a halo could have hidden throngs and a sphere tail? Naruto dumped his hands into the liquid and began to run to his bedroom wall, taking his fingers and drawing wondrous pictures on the wall. Naruto's wall had been dulling in color, so Minato and Kashina hired painters to paint his wall. Naruto even got to choose the color. Bright orange. Right now, he figured he'd help the painters who were downstairs eating the lunch Kashina graciously made for them. He giggled dipping his fingers into the paint cans, he could do this easily, it was just like finger painting, right? He smiled bodily, painting not only the wall, but little pictures and his handprints on the wall. Oh my god the wall! A shrill scream came from behind him. Naruto turned around, swiftly and he nervously laughed, trying to hide the orange hands behind his back. Although that wasn't enough to convince his angry parents and two confused painters. Of course Naruto was never left alone with paint after that incident. Achu, Naruto sneezed loudly, but his mission continued, ignoring the painful allergies and annoying sniffles. He crouched down, plucking the last purple flower he needed to complete his bodhik. Naruto was a couching and sneezing fit on his long walk home. His eyes were puffy and watery, while his hands were clammy as he knocked on the front door. Kashina answered and she was shocked. Naruto, what happened? He nearly screamed as Naruto held up the bokeet of flowers he was allergic to. I, he let out a sneeze. I know you like Thwes Mammy. He coughed. Kashina blushed, smiling as she gently hugged her son. I love you more, Naruto-kun. Kashina grinned, Naruto hugged his mother back. He would give her anything even if he had to sacrifice a little piece of himself. But daddy, Naruto sobbed, chubby tears rolling down his whiskered cheeks. He didn't want to leave the comfort of his home for some classroom. Kashina had managed to stretch her maternity leave from three months to somehow someway roughly four years. She was needed back as a ninja and Minato couldn't take Naruto to work every day. So open enrollment to daycare would have to do. I know you don't want to go, Naruto. Minato spoke, getting on one knee to his son's height. Naruto was so darn cute, he found himself struggling not to squeal like a high school girl. 
His adorable sailor shirt and blue shorts made Naruto look innocent, but this was also a problem as Minato cautiously guarded his child, fearing the trash can could be the nearest pedophile. I wanna be own with mama, Naruto hiccuped. Minato brushed away a few stray hairs off Naruto's cheeks. But Sasuke will be here, don't you want to play with him? Minato had found out Sasuke had been enrolled to daycare, hoping that would ease Naruto's fear of going, but it didn't. But, you won't come back, Naruto wailed and Minato sadly smiled. That's not true, Naruto. I tell you what, if you stand up straight like a big boy and go to daycare, then I promise we'll go to the Ichiraku ramen bar. Minato raised his eyebrows in temptation, although Naruto was ramen a best, he was still unsure. Minato softened his smile. Naruto, I would never leave you alone in a place you didn't like. Naruto whipped away a few tears and Minato gave him one last hug. Just a few hours, Naruto. And then you can come home. Poemize, Naruto cried, I promise. When a teacher came out, she took Naruto's hand, leading him into the building. It took a lot of willpower for Minato to not rush back for his son. Not even a block away, and he felt Naruto was millions of miles from his reach. On nice days, the Namikaze Uzumaki family went on picnics to either the sunny woods or the park. Today, though, they took a trip to the beach, where their days were filled with sunshine and warmth. Naruto had enjoyed splashing in the water, to learning how to swim. And when the three were supposed to be taking a small nap, he buried his father in the sand, only leaving his head. But what Naruto enjoyed the most was that delicious, mouth-watering, cinnamony, ripe, peach pie. His mother had made it from scratch and Naruto had more than three helpings. He would have had more if his mother didn't warn him about having a Buddha belly afterwards. The trip was nice, it felt like forever since he had time with his family. He began to cry at the thought of how long it would be the next time they went out. Although Kashina and Minato couldn't find the real answer as to why Naruto cried the way home, they would have never guessed it was the pie he would be missing. Ino was a girl with long pretty hair. She wouldn't allow Naruto to touch it though. This angered him. She let Sasuke tough her hair, why not him? My mammy's hair is longer. He would argue, and it's beautiful or asterisk than yours. Ino would puff up her chest in anger. She took pride in her hair and how long and pretty it was. Each night her father would comb her hair, speaking lovely words to his daughter. And to have some blonde kid who probably didn't even wash or comb his own hair insult her was a throb to the chest. Your mom is fat, she'd scream back. Naruto stopped from walking away and ran back to her. Your mom has a big butt. Your mom needs to brush her teeth. They were small insults according to adults, but to children, their mothers are everything to them. Which means, these are huge insults. I wish I never touched your hair, Ino. Sakura's is prettier anyway. Naruto folded his arms. Ino gasped. She hated Sakura. If she and Sakura were anything alike, it was they could punch. And of course Ino Yamanaka was not happy seeing a confused Hokage with a very pissed off redhead holding a crying boy holding a black eye with his small hand. Isn't it usually girls who fight over hair? Minato asked, still very confused. Out of all the old people in Konoha, Hiruzen, Gigi, was Naruto's favorite old person. He was the only guy Naruto knew that could fall asleep from talking. And then, uh, z z z z z, Gigi, Hiruzen kept sleeping, Naruto sitting still on his lap waiting for Gigi to finish the story. Gigi, a little louder, snore, Gigi, wa what, Hiruzen shot up from his slumber, baffled seeing Naruto, wide blue eyes and impatient. Finish the story Gigi, Naruto smiled, hopping up and down on the gentleman's lap. Hiruzen thought for a moment, then he realized that he had forgotten the part of the story, and which story he was telling for that matter, that when he continued to think it over, he began to fall back asleep. Naruto raised an eyebrow, Gigi, he asked, snore, snore. Gigi stoi, the stoi. Hiruzen couldn't hear the boy and just as soon as Minato returned from collecting something he smirked at Naruto trying to wake the old man. Naruto, wash up for supper. A woman called from the kitchen. Naruto didn't hear her while he played with his toys in the living room. Just a sec mammy, he called, as he continued to play with his plush Pikachu and Goku action figure. Naruto, 
Put away your toys and wash up for supper. The voice demanded again. That irritated Naruto. No, he argued. You do so as you're told right now, young man. You be underscore. The house was silent. What was that word? A scream came from the kitchen and Uzumaki Kashina appeared in a flat second in front of Naruto, who shook and trembled with fear. You've got three seconds to explain that, young man. She spoke deathly quiet. Uh. Uh. Naruto had no idea what the word meant. He had overheard Pervy Sage and Kakashi Kun scream it over a game of pickle poker one night. Minato and Kashina had gone on a date, leaving Kakashi and Jiraiya to watch Naruto. Well, in the middle of the night, Naruto had gotten up for a glass of water and couldn't help but see the two men gambling, smoking and cursing. Well, one word stuck in Naruto's head and he had just happened to call his mother that word. What? Dot did you call me, Naruto? -O, his mother slurred. And nothing. Naruto lied. Don't baffle towards me. What name did you just call me and where did you lean that? Naruto sighed, knowing he was defeated. Although what he found strange was when he mentioned the names, Pervy Sage and Kakashi Kun. His mother continued treating him like an angel even after she stormed out of the house. Of course he had no idea that Kashina thought her sweet angel Chan was brainwashed by two perverts. Poor Kakashi and Jiraiya, they've been calling for help for horse but still they were hanging from the trees by their feet. Naruto liked Konohamaru. When Naruto first saw the tyke, Konohamaru was wrapped in a blanket sleeping. Naruto had only been four, but he was curious. He wondered why there was a baby sleeping in his crib. The adults told him to play extra quiet today, and Naruto was not allowed into the room for a short while. Naruto was only curious as he gently opened the door and stuck his head in. He saw the baby breathe and unsoundly sleep. He had to get a better look. Imagine his amazement when he saw the baby turn over, letting his little hand stick out. Naruto had never seen such a tiny hand. He let his index finger stick out and the baby clutched onto it. Naruto smiled. Let's be friends, Konohamaru, he whispered. Minato was a very busy Hokage. Since he was the best, he had lots and lots of work to do. Most of this work would take a long time, even with tons of assistances. Many paperwork, visits to and from other countries, argument and peace treaties, even down to activities. But this took tolls on his body and mind a lot, becoming forgetful and very tired was the number one. As he finished his long walk home, he surly was surprised to see Naruto jump up and tackle him to the ground. Happy Father's Day, to San. He giggled, handing Minato a card. I made it. Father's Day, he had totally forgotten that was today. Still, he smiled, he was truly surprised. He kissed Naruto's brow. Naruto. Do you know why I'm a father? Minato asked. Do you know how a father becomes a father? Naruto thought for a moment. When he and Mami has a baby? He asked. Minato nodded. That's right, Naruto, you are my greatest gurft, don't forget that. He smiled, hugging the boy tightly. Unlike Father's Day, Mother's Day was never forgotten. Usually Kashina awoke to flowers surrounding her bed and breakfast nearly falling off her lap. But today, None of that was there. It wasn't like she was expecting it every year, but she was confused as to why the house was dead quiet. She turned to her left, her husband wasn't in bed with her, that made her feel lonely. When she went to wake Naruto, she was confused to see he was not in his bed. Where are they? She asked out loud. Meanwhile. Oh, come on. Minato nearly yelled, frustrated. Naruto yawned, he wasn't used to waking up early. Daddy had woken him up saying they needed to head to the store to find a present for mommy. Well, he nearly dozed off in the shopping cart and now the plush cupcake costume Minato bought for Naruto wasn't zipping right. Damn you, Minato cursed, ignoring the fact that his son was right in front of him. Daddy, Naruto yawned, Minato smiled and cheered, finally the damn zipper zipped all the way up, he looked at Naruto. Yes Naruto, I have to go potty. Dot. Dot, dot, Minato groaned, can you hold it until we show mommy? He pleaded. Naruto yawned again, that diapines, daddy, you mean, depends, Naru kun. Minato sighed, and just try, please. It'll only be for two seconds then I'll help you, alright. Naruto nodded and Minato picked up Naruto, and, flashing, 
his way home. Minato could hear the sound of dishes being washed and he knew this was his K. All right, Naruto go, Minato whispered, just like we rehearsed. Naruto was placed on the ground, as he yawned loudly and strolled to the kitchen. Mammy, he called, yawning again. Kashina turned around and nearly squealed with joy. The sight of Naruto in a chocolate cupcake outfit with pink frosting was too adorable. Oh, Naru-kun, you're so adorable, she cried loudly. Naruto yawned. I, Minato smirked, waiting for Naruto to finish his sentence so he could bring out the chocolate cupcakes Kashina loved. I, Kashina nodded, waiting for Naruto. Minato looked at his watch and glanced behind the corner, what was taking him so long. Naruto's eyes closed, but one eye after the next and pretty soon Naruto fell face flat on the ground, snoozing away and possibly leaking from a full bladder. Da ami ie t t t t t. Minato cursed. After three weeks of this, all he's given is a sleepy kid who peed his pants. Kashina smiled lovingly at Naruto, petting his hair. Dear, she called, will you bring me a blanket and some towels, please? Yeah, Kashina love, Minato sighed, sad how his plan didn't go into action on how he wanted it. Dot, 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 but there was still his plans for tonight. Gigi san, Naruto called. Jiraiya paid no attention to Naruto, he continued to read the paper and ignore, the brat. He didn't understand why he even offered Minato and Kashina to watch Naruto while they went on their errands. Naruto huffed, scooting a chair, not noticing how the scrapes along the wood floor bothered and irritated Jiraiya's ears. Gigi san, Naruto cried loudly, what, the pervert finally gave in. When is your birthday? Naruto innocently asked. The white-haired man raised his eyebrow. Why do you care? Cause, you have white hair, I bet you're old. Jiraiya felt his eyebrow twitch and went back to the paper. Naruto poked his godfather's arm. I'm turning four, will you be four trillion? He quietly asked, ignoring the, are you kidding me? Look the man gave out into space. Naruto have you ever heard of the phrase, don't talk back to your elders? Jiraiya asked, hoping he stumped the brat. Does elders mean smart people? Naruto asked. Yes, yes it does, Naruto. Then, that doesn't count you, you're not smart. Silence. Come back here you little runt. Wah, Naruto cried, as his godfather chased him. Minato and Kashina heard outside and sighed, what did Naruto do this time? Don't touch daddy's kanai. Don't touch daddy's scrolls. Don't touch daddy's stars. Don't even think about asking to touch them. That was Kashina and Minato's rule about any weapon in the house. Minato was Hokage, he couldn't just walk around, even in the own safety of his hometown without having at least a scroll up his sleeve. When Naruto was crawling he thought his new kunai set would be alright on the coffee table, wrong. Naruto rolled right into the table and the box fell on the floor right next to the baby. Of course Minato became real friends with the couch after that accident even after apologizing to Kashina a million times. But after that Minato was hell-bent on making sure Naruto didn't come in contact with any weapons until he was at least at a proper age. But Kashina was a different story, she, however, was adamant on making sure Naruto didn't even look at a weapon until he was at 18, her minimum age requirement. Imagine the hysteria she went through when Naruto came home crying with bloody knuckles after playing at Sasuke's house because he and Sasuke thought they were big enough to play with weapons. To Minato's surprise she didn't over-exaggerate like he thought she would, instead she was as calm as ever bandaging his knuckles, kissing them gently, then holding him in her arms while softly singing a song. He promised to never play with weapons and became the cheery little boy again. What Kashina hated most about weapons was, when he did become old enough to use them and if he did get hurt somehow, he probably wouldn't run to her for hugs and kisses. Kashina really hated weapons. Naruto narrowed his eyes from under the porch. The sun was high in the sky as he clutched a stick next to him. When he saw a pair of legs in front of him, he dodged out of the porch and tacked whoever was in front of him and cheered. Woo woo, I won the war. He smiled. Owie, Naru, Sasuke growled. Naruto had skinned his knees and it stung. Naruto gasped, quickly kissing the infection. It wasn't too bad, it just stuck. Gomen, Sasu, Naruto felt bad, but Sasuke smiled. I forgive you. The two laughed, 
When Makoto called the boy inside the drop their stick and were ready for a nap, they had enough war for one afternoon. It was horrific, ugly and he hated it. I don't want it, he pouted, crossing his arms. One of the many stuffed foxes was placed on his bed, not his crib, but his bed. That's right, Naruto was too big for his crib anymore. Minato had taken down the bars and rails, turning the two in one into a full bed for a kid just Naruto's size. But Naruto wasn't having any fun in this. But it's a big boy, bed. Naruto, aren't you a big boy? Kashina smiled, coaxing her son. Naruto shook his head, a mass of blonde hair sprouting everywhere. No, that means you're one step closer to becoming Hokage, Naru-chan, Minato pointed out. Be like daddy, daddy sleeps in a big bed. Naruto still pouted, it's stupid. Minato bit his lip, lifting up Naruto in his arms. See, try it out, you'll like it. After setting the blonde on the bed, Naruto immediately jumped off, still scowling at his parents. Both father and mother sighed in defeat. No matter how much Naruto whined and cried they wouldn't give him back his crib he spent so many lovely years in. That night he became restless and worse. It was 8.30, about 30 minutes past Naruto's usual bedtime and he wasn't going to sleep. But Minato could see his yawns, his tired blue eyes, Naruto was very much tired. Naruto, why won't you sleep in your new bed? Minato asked. It's dumb. Naruto mumbled. Why is it dumb? Ma scared. Why are you scared, baby? Naruto pointed to his bed. Monster. There's a monster under your bed. Minato acted surprised, setting Naruto on his bed. Well, let me look here. Minato crouched onto the floor, lifting the sheet. Nope, no monster. Naruto crouched down to have a look for himself but indeed, there was no monster. Now, it's time for bed. Minato kissed Naruto's forehead. Foxy too. Naruto pleaded. Minato then the button on his fox's nose. Naruto, there won't be any monsters, none while I'm here. Minato reassured. Naruto smiled, yawning as Minato sat beside him till he was in a deep sleep. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.